here, here this evening, and we wish to let them know that they have been and have and continue to be in our thoughts and prayers. Without any further delay, I will now hand over to Right Worshipful Sir Knight Graham Hunter, immediate County Grand Master, who will chair the proceedings. Assistant Sovereign Grand Master, County Grand Master, County Officers, Worshipful District Master, Deputy District Master, Worshipful Master and Deputy Master of RBP 186, visiting Sir Knight's Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you all here this evening to the grounds of St Mary's Parish Church Cumber, adjacent to Cumber Square, in the shadow of the memorial of Lieutenant Colonel, Lieutenant General Rolo Gillespie, to mark another chapter in the long and distinguished history of Star of Cumber, RBP 186. Could I thank the Worshipful Master and Sir Knights of RBP 186 for inviting me to chair their proceedings here this evening. Indeed, it is a great honour to be asked to participate on this special occasion in the life of your Persepolis. It's the norm of formal occasions such as this to ask a prominent or well-respected Sir Knight from the Persepolis or District Chapter to undertake this role, but I take it as there are all unfurlings this evening and some Sir Knights are probably in holiday, they have no such Sir Knight available and so they have no other options but they ask me instead. <laughs> Sir Knight, in all honesty, it is a great privilege and indeed it is very humbling for me to be asked to share the proceedings here this evening on this historic occasion for Europe is separate, and in the presence of so many distinguished Sir Knights, such as our Assistant Sovereign Grand Master Sir Knight Billy, and our County Grand Master Sir Knight Cunningham, and considering the calibre of the great Sir Knights of RBP 186 who have gone before us. It is always regarded as a sign that the are looking to their future when they undertake to commission and unfurl a new banner. These matters normally take a number of years to commission both in design and subsequent manufacture. Indeed, RBP 186 are a strong and vibrant Persepolis with the current membership approaching 60 members. They are the largest Persepolis in Cumber District, something they are extremely proud of. However, just to keep their feet on the ground, if they were a member of Warren District where our esteemed Sir Knight Billy is from, they would be one of the smaller Persepolis in his district. You can see here from the platform party this evening, they have a mixture of experience but also useful officers. And as you can see, by their worshipful master, Sir Knight Heasley, and the fact that they have two young lecturers, indeed Sir Knights, all looks to be going well and in the right direction for the future of the Persepolis. I would wish them every success. There are obviously something about your Persepolis, other than size, which attracts Sir Knights in their ranks. The purchase of a new banner also gives everyone connected to the Persepolis the chance to reflect on the past and remember those Sir Knights who came before us and made our institution what it is today. I want to thank Sir Knight Kyle McElrath for giving me an insight into the, into the history of RBP 186, and I want to take this brief opportunity to share some of the history with you. Star of Cumber RBP 186 is encamped in Cumber Orange Hall and meets on the second Tuesday of each month at 7.30 p.m. I think Sir Knight uh, McElrath put that in, because only Sir Knight would want to join them. They what hey, we're more than meet now. <laughs> and has a current membership of 55, and I believe new members are due to be initiated soon, bringing their numbers to just below 60. The Persepolis membership is composed of brethren from nine different Orange Lodges and Royal Arts Purple Chapters. Twelve Sir Knights have served as Worshipful District Master of Cumber Royal Black District Chapter Number 10 since the district's formation in 1906, the most recent being Sir Knight Sam Hoskins between 2015 and 16. And prior to that, the current Persepolis Register and District Deputy Register, Sir Knight McElrath, who occupied the Office of Worshipful Master in 2013 and 2014. Sir Knight William James McKibben of RBP 186 was County Grand Master in 1935, the first Sir Knight from Cumber District to hold this office. And the current warrant of County Down Grand Black Chapter, under which the county still meet, was issued to him during his term of office. His grandson David and great grandson Gary are both members of RBP 186, and both these Sir Knights are past masters of the Persepolis, and David is their current chaplain, and we're going to hear from him later as he reads from the scriptures. Many across our institution will also remember the late Sir Knight Tom Gibson. Tom was a stalwart of RBP 186 and Cumber District, and served in many offices within this institution. He was registered of RBP 186 for 30 years, was Imperial Grand Director of Ceremonies in 1979. 
and held the office of Deputy County Grand Treasurer from 78 to 92. He served as Deputy County Grand Master between 92 and 93, and Tom was elected as County Grand Master in 94, and was due to the RBP 186's second County Grand Master, but sadly passed away on the 9th of June 1994 before having the opportunity to be installed in the office of County Grand Master. Last year, RBP 186 was surprised to learn that the facility had been in operation for 150 years. It was established from the brief records held in Brownlow House that the original warrant for RBP 186 was issued on the 26th of May 1867 and was signed for by Sir Nate James Montgomery. The warrant for both RBP 186 was then reissued on the 3rd of December 1894 to again a James Montgomery. It is assumed that it was the same person that both warrants were issued to. It would then appear that the warrant for 186 operated for some time in the South Down area and an archive news item from the Belfast Weekly News refers to the meaning of McSpadden's RBP 186 in the Uri area. Little all, all our information has been found. However, an old facility seal for RBP 186 was found in 1987 when a house in the Points Pass area of South Down was being cleared. The house belonged to a Mrs McSpadden and it was being cleared by her son-in-law, a Sir Knight Edmund Montgomery. The family contacted RBP 186 in Cumber and a meeting was held on the old seal being formally handed over to the Vesepi by the family concerned. The Vesepi has continued to meet regularly from its inception in Cumber up to the present day. Formerly being a member of Fallon Hinch, who well, like the district chapter number 5, before becoming one of the founding members of Cumber District in 1906. During both world wars, the Vesepi continued to meet to conduct necessary business, confer degrees, and one interesting insight to the feeling of society during the First World War is encapsulated by the wording used by the Vesepi Register for the Nantes, recorded during the period of the First World War. Instead of the usual God save the Queen, a wording which we would all be familiar with, the Register during the First World War period wrote, God save us all. The many books of any Vesepi are at times an insight into that period of history and show a change in society norms. Today it is common practice for Vesepi to send a basket of fruit to a surname that is in hospital. But back in 1958, and for some years after this, the Vesepi sent a packet of cigarettes to a surname he was in hospital. I'm not sure if this would really be appreciated today, surname. However, the intention remains the same, to show the recipient that he was in the thoughts and prayers of his fellow surname, and that his presence is missed among them. The Vesepi over the years has been a very sociable one, Extracts from many books going back to 1904 show all the usual records of the meetings detailed who was present, apologies, deaths, bereavements, etc. However, when you read these minutes, large swathes of them refer to the organisation and costs associated with Persephone writings and excursions to far off places like Bangor, Bally Walter, Donagadee, Port Rush, Newcastle, Londonderry, and Enniskillen. There was at least one excursion each year, as well as the various parades and church services of the Vesepi's would normally attend. The Vesepi on its early days also frequently changed its meeting night to encourage a social gathering afterwards, and some might say that nothing really has changed as this tradition of fellowship still continues. It was quite usual for social evenings that many of the Sir Knights sing their favourite pieces, and then it's actually recorded on many occasions the names of Sir Knights and songs they perform. Names that frequently appear in the minutes are Thomas O'Pray, and apparently one of his favourite pieces was Old King Cole, Hugh Miskelly, Fred Corgan, George Raleigh, Gordon Brown, and I'm sure if Tom Corgan's here, he would remember Gordon singing Paddy McGinley's Goat as well as doing all the actions in the bar. <laughs> James Cameron, David Quinn and John Watson. In more recent times, Bernie Marshall and Alec McKenzie are names mentioned. The Bicepri were also blessed with a number of real characters that could have Sir Knights and Stitches with jokes and yarns. One of these was Sir Knight Robert Larry, and the Vesepi really enjoyed his joke about Tokyo Joe. However, I'm not quite sure of, the, of his love of pickled eggs went down just as well with all the members, or with some of their families the next day when the effect of eating the pickled eggs late in the evening took hold. Also, Sir Knight's like Harry Burgess, who began a friendship with Hutchison, RBP, 1180, and Govern. Sam Thompson, Sam Stevenson, Stanley Ray, John Montgomery, all Cumber characters that could hold the attention 
of everyone in the room with their wit and stories about the old town of Cumber. Current day characters are still evident in the Pacific, such as Sir Nate Tom Corgan, Andy McMillan, Cecil Hull, Jack MacArthur, Sam Hoskins, David McKibben and David Pollock, who do their best to keep this tradition alive. They all keep the other Sinaites, especially younger ones, entertained after the meetings, and the fraternal friendship also extends to Scotland, where the Pacific for many years have had a close association with Hutchison RBP 1180. Sir Knights of RBP 186 regularly attend the Scottish demonstration, and last year a number of Sir Knights made the trip from Glasgow to attend the county demonstration here in Cumber. The first banner that the set we have is a flag made by Bridges of Belfast, and it's noted that this was repaired on a few occasions, and new poles were acquired at least three times. And Sir Knight Matthew Munn, a well-known name around Cumber, was a sole standard bearer for many years. The next flag was discussed at the Pacific in 1921, and a quote for a new flag was £20. The flag wasn't unfurled until August 1929. Their next and first banner, as we would know them, was a portrait of Great Worshipful Sir Knight W.J. McKibben, past County Grand Master, was unfurled on Saturday the 4th of August 1951. His daughter, Mrs. Granger, unfurled the banner, and also at the unfurling was W.J. McKibben's son, Francis, or Frank as he was known, his grandson David, or current, the current chaplain. The banner was painted by Sir Knight Vulgus of Ainsworth Street in Belfast at a cost of £78. And I'm sure you would admit, Sir Knight, the cost a good bit more than that now. However, after its first earning, there appeared to be some problem with it, and the minutes note angry Sir Knight's demanding that it was redone. It is assumed that this happened, as there is no further record of it. The next banner was commissioned in 1958, however, there appears to have been some delay. And Sir Knight Reid was contacted to make the banner, with it being eventually unfurled on the 20th of August 1960. The latest banner used by the Pacific up until this evening was commissioned by Sir Knight Strain and Oma and was unfurled on the 29th of July 1988. It has stood the test of time and hopefully this new banner will last as long. Sir Knight, I do know that two of their previous banners have been displayed in the hall here this evening and if you get a chance, I would urge you to go in and have a look at them both. Stephen Rogers from Newton Arts. <coughs> Flying Colours, Banners and Bannerettes. His recent work has been exceptional for all the Royal Orders and local bands. And the Sarnation and Cumber were in attendance when a banner he was supported by Star of Ards, RBP 1160, last Friday evening. And we look forward with anticipation to see the latest example of his work here this evening. And I do know Sir Knight, uh, the Sir Knight is with us here this evening, Sir Knight Rogers is with us here, and we thank him for attending here this evening as well. The banners and flags of any organisation are very important, and this latest banner, which I am sure will illustrate the things that we as Sir Knights believe in and are rightly proud of, it will publicly proclaim to all our belief in the reformed faith as Christian Sir Knights. In this continuing secular society, this message has never been more important. Sir Knight, I would now call on the Reverend Canon Dr. Jonathan Barry to lead us in the opening prayer, after which we will sing the first hymn on the order of service, Abide with Me. Thank you, Sir Knight Brian Hunter. I want to say, first of all, that for me this is a great honour to be here tonight and to take part in this service and to dedicate the banner. I haven't seen it but I've seen colour photographs of it, and I think it is uh, quite magnificent. The second thing I'd like to say is, what a lovely evening it is. We've been blessed. There's no wind, and there's no rain. <laughs> and it's not too hot. It's just perfect. And uh, I just want to say that um, to all my many parishioners who over the years have said to me, would you say a prayer? Would you say something up above for good weather on wherever it is? I've always replied, that's a management decision. I'm only in sales. Well, the management here tonight has given us a lovely evening. Would you bow your heads in prayer, please? up our prayers to God.
God the Father, to God the Son, and to God the Holy Spirit. Let us remember the presence of God with us now, and lift up our hearts in the spirit of prayer. Eternal God, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, unite us as we worship thee here this night, with all who are in far-off places are lifting up their hands and hearts to thee, that thy church throughout the world, with the church in heaven, may offer up one sacrifice of thanksgiving to the praise and honour of thy holy name. This we ask in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. centre 
of the administration of the House of Lords and the House of Commons. And the next time I saw him, I asked him about Jim Molyneux. I said, I thought it was interesting he was named as Parliamentarian of the Year. And I was told, you have no idea how much he has done to deserve that. It's the way he is as a man. It's not just when he's speaking from the benches. When he speaks, he's listened to because he's known to be a man of integrity. And I have to say that I found myself, I find myself now feeling rather old, that the leadership of all the churches and the leadership in society generally in this part of the world seems to leave an awful lot. Uh, it, it's just um, quite, quite dreadful. And I don't think it's just a, a man becoming more senior uh, thinking that life isn't so good as it once was. I'm absolutely certain I know what I'm saying. Where is it within the Protestant community, if you like, just restrict to the Protestant community, where is the leadership of the caliber of somebody like Jim Molyneux? We don't have it at the moment, and that's what's wrong, and it's the same in the churches.